Hey, what's going on? You're watching Math Head. In this video, we're going to talk about compound interest. Not the compound interest, continuous compound interest, but the most basic case of compound interest. Uh, we are also not going to discuss anything about different compounding periods, um, except just a very general case. I'll go through it and then I'll show you how the modifications take place and I will leave that for another video because this is a little bit dense if you're not uh, familiar with mathematics, that if you're not really good at it, if you're just trying to learn about compound interest because someone recommended it to you, because you saw a YouTuber who said that Einstein said that compound interest was the eighth wonder of the world which I find that hard to believe when he was preoccupied with the photoelectric effect, sp space time, special and general relativity. I mean, compound interest, it's not that awesome, okay? But this is gonna break it down to you in a way that you may not have seen before. So this is compound interest formula explained. All right, for sake of, of interest, ha ha ha, in time and your time and my time, I wrote this stuff down, but you are going to learn everything you need to know, all right? This is the simple case of compound interest, not simple interest, all right? So uh, really quickly though, let's see the difference between compound interest formula and simple interest formula. This is the compound interest formula, this thing, where A is the amount after some time after this compound interest formula has occurred, P is the principal amount, the initial amount you put in, we're not going to consider any kinds of monthly additions, just the very basic, so you can understand this at a very basic level first, all right? R is the rate, the interest rate, um, and this can be, you know, adding or subtracting based on if this is a credit card you're talking about or if it's, uh, you know, something like a bank account. And T is the amount of time and uh, the amount of number of compounds, really. Okay, so compound interest is this formula, like I said, and simple interest is just this. That's it. So literally like after the first time compounding time period, you're just gonna have, that's what simple interest is. So basically this line right here. And after that, it's done. You're done earning money, goodbye. All right, so this the interest of this video, man, I keep using interest is to derive this and to really understand what's going on. All right, so what I have here is these subscripts, zero, one, two, three, mathematicians love subscripts. It's just a convention, but it's, it's really good because this denotes the time period, okay? So the initial time period and the convention is zero. All right, so the zeroth time period, you're gonna put in some money, P. Now P stands for anything you can put in the principal, okay? $100 into a bank account, whatever you want. Now after one year, the bank is going to give you an amount of interest. Oh my goodness, my beanie fell off. The bank is going to give you an amount of interest, all right? And that interest is based on the principal or in the amount that you have in the bank. Well, at time zero, you only have principal. So one year goes by, they take that principal amount, they multiply it by the rate that they're giving you, and then they add it to the principal. Because if you were just to multiply principal by rate, you're gonna get a way lower amount. You're not gonna, it's not gonna be the correct effect. And this formula is what I classify as um, an artificial formula. So uh, in one of my Foundations of Math videos, I describe the difference between the really two categories that I like to think about applied mathematics formulas. Uh, in and it's uh, natural formulas which are formulas that kind of explain the world and uh, we try to make our best guess so basically all of physics sorry physicists who are watching this but I doubt they are and the second category is going to be something like this man-made man-derived we know exactly what this is going to yield as long as these variables stay fixed meaning that the rate of the interest doesn't fluctuate, the time periods don't change sporadically, and things don't occur all strangely like in nature. So, and this brings me to an issue with investing. Okay, you have compound interest. This is going to give you a specific amount. But if you tie this to what you think you're gonna make in the stock market, for example, that is not gonna give you the right answer because you're not factoring in risk. You're not factoring in fluctuations. 
but we'll save that for another video. I got a lot of investing videos coming up. The real, real deal on investing. There's so many scammers and crackpots out there. It's just crazy. Anyways, getting off track. All right, so after that first year, you have your principal amount, then you have what the bank pays you, okay? Second year, now instead of just principal, you have that whole amount. Principal plus principal times the interest. Boom, that's what you have, and then plus what the bank pays you. All right, making the leap from here to here is very important to really see how you get from here to here. You know, you just start with this and you can rename this whole thing as, as you know, Z or whatever. And that could be your new amount that you put right here. And then you have Z plus ZR, you know, but I don't want to give you, you know, uh, soup, like variable soup. Okay. I don't want you to get lost in that. I, it's very important that you see this and this. Okay. Now, after the second year, you're on to the third year. The, now you have this whole amount in the bank. Boom. That's right here. Plus this whole amount times R again. And that's what the bank pays you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've made it to A3, you have enough data to derive this formula, all right? It's almost like magic, and a lot of mathematics is just a bunch of little tricks and stuff based on axioms and definitions. Don't wanna to go too deep into that, but I will in my fundamentals, and I will show you math proofs and the very fundamentals of math and why we can do all this manipulation and all this crap, okay? so. Boom, right here, we're going to start now deriving this. It's just some algebra. So if we look at what we have, we have, now just looking at this, I'm gonna rewrite it. So equals P plus PR plus, and then P plus PR, R plus, and then this whole thing multiplied by R. So I'm gonna multiply that out. So you have P plus PR, distributive property, all right, not gonna prove it, plus P plus PR, R squared, because you multiply this by this, okay? If you've gotten to this point, hooray! All right, good job, it's awesome. The first thing to learning math is to understand and know that you can do it and it's not a bunch of esoteric occult practice that you can't learn, right? Okay, so now this is a trick. Seeing this P plus PR grouping is going to help us out a lot because we're gonna take all those out, all right? So when you take stuff out, you are removing it from the multiplication. Here, we really have a one times P plus PR because that doesn't change the value, okay? So I take the P plus PR portion out, P plus PR. And then, well, if I were to distribute it to the rest of the terms, I'm going to have a, a, all the coefficients left. So one plus an R plus an R plus an R squared. And if you multiply this back in, you would get this whole thing back, okay? Let me check, make sure that video is still going. Okay, seven minutes too. All right, so now, if you are right here, again, congratulations, that's an awesome step. Now, this is only going to be um, recognized by people who have math background and experience, because again, it's just another little trick. It's basic little trick thing. It's only basic if you're familiar with it though. P plus PR plus, I'm just gonna rewrite this as one plus two R plus R squared. And our good friend Pascal has made a triangle. You should look it up, I'll link it in the description. And it shows you this pattern, these patterns show up. This, this one, two, one coefficient pattern, because there's a one in front of this R, and with the R to the zero, R to the one, R to the two. It shows up multiple times, and there's a proof showing that this, this term right here equals one plus R to the N, in this case, or to the T, because we're using T in the exponent. The T in this case is two, so we have two. 
So we have P plus PR times one plus R squared. All right, now this, take a snapshot. Good job. I'm going to come up here. Okay, sorry about the mess. We have P plus PR. We're on the home stretch, ladies and gentlemen. R squared, all right? That's going to be for time period three, okay? Remember this. Now, P plus PR, what can we do? We can remove a P. So that equals P times one plus R, because if we distribute it, we get P plus PR, times one plus R squared. Oh my gosh. This term and this term, same thing. What do you do? You add exponents, so you get P times one plus R to the third. Boom, we are done. I don't know if you see it or not, but the third and the third, and that's why when you start at zero, that's important. So the time period three equals T. So th there we go, that's how we do it. That's how this formula is demystified, all right? This is the basic version of compound interest, the compound interest formula. And if I have enough comments and likes and requests, I can make a formal proof of this, I can all, because this is not a proof, all right? This is just a derivation based on like a guess of a pattern recognition. A proof is more uh, rigorous. So if you wanna see that, let me know. Uh, also, with this, we are um, it, not in the case of continuous compound interest. I mean, we are, this could continue forever and forever, but if you really wanna know like how uh, credit card companies charge you because they charge you on a continuous basis um, uh, or very close to it. I mean, if you want to see the compound interest formula for a continuous continuous formula and how E comes in there, uh, you know, Euler's number and all this crazy stuff, definitely let me know and I'll probably make it anyways because this is a math channel. All right, that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a good one. Subscribe to the channel.